assalamu alaikum today we are going to uh, discuss the nerves the arteries and the lymphatic drainage of the anterior lateral abdominal wall so first of all we will see the nerves of the anterior lateral abdominal wall and we will see uh, this all in the form of a flow chart okay so that it will be easy for you all to remember it so the nerves uh, which we splice the anterior lateral abdominal wall include the thoraco abdominal nerve the subcostal nerve and there will be the first lumbar nerve we will see those one by one first of all we will discuss the thoraco abdominal nerves nerves and uh, the thoraco abdominal nerve uh, they will be c's uh, arise from the t7 to T11 vertebra. These thoracic abdominal nerves, they are actually the thoracic uh, uh, nerve which will surround the thoracic cage, and uh, they are those nerves. But after giving their lateral cutaneous branch, they will become the thoracic abdominal nerve. Means they will uh, move into the abdominal region. This point I have explained with diagram in the lecture of the nerves of the thoracic cavity. You can see uh, that lecture. It will be very clear to you. Okay, here I will only tell you. about uh, its branches in the abdomen so in the abdomen it will gives one lateral cutaneous branch lateral cutaneous other it will also give some muscular branches muscular and then it will gives the anterior cutaneous branch anterior cutaneous branches so these are the three branches which it will give in the abdomen region so uh, this lateral cutaneous branch it will arise at the level of anterior axillary line and it will gives the cutaneous innervation to the right and the left hypochondric regions innervation to right as left hypochondric chondric regions in the muscular it will give innervation to all the five muscles of the anterior lateral abdominal wall like the rectus abdominis muscle or the transverse abdominis muscle external oblique internal oblique and the pyramidal dialis muscle okay and this anterior cutaneous branch it will arise at parasternal line okay we will uh, see it here in the detail so the fibers of t7 to t9 they will give the cutaneous innervation to the skin present superior to umbilicus superior to umbilicus okay the t10 will spray uh, the skin present at umbilicus and uh, uh, the t um, uh, 11 or in the t12 it will spray the skin present below the umbilicus T11 and T12. What you can say the subcostal. It will give the cutaneous innervation to skin present below to umbilical to umbilicus. So if we see here, I will show you in the form of a small diagram here also. Like uh, this was the vertebra. Let's suppose and this is uh, the sternum. they will originate from a uh, vertebra like that from t7 vertebra and like this they will move like this now at the level of this anterior axillary line here they will be the let gives lateral cutaneous branch which will supply the skin here by the lateral then uh, near the sternum in the parasternal line it will give the anterior cutaneous branch which will supply the skin of the anterior abdominal uh, abdominal wall like this okay so this i have told you in whole uh, topic now we will move toward the next uh, nerve that is the subcostal nerve subcostal nerve and uh, it will arise from the t12 vertebra and this subcostal nerve it will supply the external oblique muscle and the skin bet uh, between the umbilicus and the iliac crest external oblique muscle and skin between umbilicus
and LA crest. As I told you, the skin pressure below to black and below to black is still the LA crest. It will be supplied by the subcoastal nerve. It will be the cutaneous innervations. Okay. Now we will move to the first lumbar nerve, L1 nerve. This first lumbar nerve it will give the two branches. One will be iliohypogastric nerve. and the other one will be ilioinguinal nerve iliohypogastric it will be the superior branch okay and ilioinguinal it will be inferior branch of this uh, lump first lumbar nerve now the iliohypogastric nerve, nerve it will supply the internal oblique muscle and the transverse abdominus muscle it will supply internal oblique and transverses abdominus these are its uh, muscular uh, innervations and then its cutaneous innervation it will be to the skin over the iliac crest and the upper inguinal and hypogastric region main is hypogastric region gastric and the inguinal as it is in uh, ilio hypogastric is the inguinal region and the hypogastric regions these are its cutaneous innervation now the inguinal ilio inguinal nerve so it, uh, its muscular innervation they will be same as these the uh, internal oblique and the transverse abdominus and its cutaneous innervation will be the skin over the lower inguinal region and the anterior scrotum lower inguinal region and anterior scrotum these are its cutaneous innervation so here we have cleared all the nerves of the anterior lateral abdominal wall now we will move toward the vessels the blood supply okay So the blood will it will be supplied by the two main vessel. One will be the internal thoracic artery, which is the branch of the subclavian artery, by costo cervical trunk. We have discussed that in the supply of the ab thoracic wall of also internal thoracic ar artery. So this internal thoracic artery it will uh, give one branch named a musculophrenic artery. and then it will continue as this is the continuation continue as the superior epigastric artery so this musculophrenic as its name indicates phrenic it will supply its diaphragm phrenic body is for the diaphragm okay remember it and it will also supply the hypochondric region to understand the name of these uh, regions you must uh, watch my first lecture regarding these regions in which i will explain all these regions okay after that uh, uh, do you will understand that which artery is supplying which area and the superior epigastric it will uh, supply the rectus abdominis muscle and the epigastric region so epigastric to so epigastric region region and the muscle was rectus abdominis These are the innervations by the internal thoracic artery and the second uh, main artery which was supplied it is the aorta. Aorta first of all aorta it will give two direct branches one will be the 10th and the 11th posterior intercostal arteries. Okay and the other one will be the subcostal. artery as we know aorta has uh, uh, four parts like the ascending aorta then the arch of aorta then there will be the thoracic aorta and then the abdominal aorta after the abdominal aorta the uh, it will uh, the abdominal aorta it will divide into the two right and left common iliac artery okay common iliac arteries 
and these common ilic arteries they will then uh, divides to form the internal ilic and the external ilic artery and this external ilic artery it will uh, then give uh, uh, two branches the inferior hypogastric inferior epigastric and the second one will be deep circumflex ilic and then uh, this external ilic artery it will then continue as this is the continuation after crossing this inguinal ligament it will becomes the femoral artery femoral artery it will also contribute two branches uh, uh, in the abdomen and those two branches they will be superficial circumflex ilic and the superficial epigastric it was deep circumflex ilic it will be superficial circumflex ilic and there will be superficial epigastric artery so these are all the arteries which are contributing uh, uh, by of the blood supply to the abdomen and these were the two branches of the internal thoracic the musculophrenic and superior epigastric then the two branches are directly from the outer the subcostal and the 10th and 11th posterior intercostal artery then then the two branches of the external ilic artery which were the inferior epigastric and deep circumflex ilic artery and the two branches of the femoral artery the superficial epigastric and the circumflex ilic With the these will be which I am circling are actually the supplying branches in the abdomen. This, this, this one, this one, I have done all this for you to so that you can understand it, it in a better way. And also one point: this inferior epigastric and superior epigastric, they both will also have anastomos. Okay, this is anastomos, and this point will be umbilical region. They will anastomos as the umbilical region. Okay, now we will move towards the lymphatic drainage of the anterior lateral abdominal wall. So the lymph, as we uh, know that the lymph vessels they will uh, accompany the superficial veins and accompany the deep veins. There are two types of the lymph vessels accompany superficial vein and the other will accompany deep vein. There are two types of the. Uh, 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 lymphatic vessels now uh, those which will accompany the superficial veins they will also have two divisions okay one will those which will be present superior to the trans umbilical plane superior to trans umbilical plane and other will be present inferior to transumbilical plane plane of the limb from these which will accompany the uh, superior to the transumbilical plane it will uh, drain mostly into the axillary lymph nodes and some will also drain into the parasternal lymph nodes and from this the lymph will move to the subclavian uh, lymphatic trunk and then ultimately into the right venous angle okay we have discussed that in detail when we discuss the lymphatic drainage of the upper limb now uh, the vessels which will uh, the company uh, inferior to the trans umbilical plane 
तो द लिम्फ फ्रॉम दीज विल ट्रेन टू दी सुपरफिशियल इन गॉयनल लिम्फ नोड्स वेयर सुपरफिशियल इन गॉयनल लिम्फ नोड Now we will uh, discuss these, which will accompany the deep vessels. So the uh, the lymph will first enter into the external ileic lymph nodes. Then from external ileic, the lymph will move to the common ileic lymph nodes. And uh, from from common ileic lymph node, it will uh, move to the lumbar lymphatic duct. lymphatic duct so this is about the lymphatic drainage of the anterior lateral abdominal wall thank you